Hello and welcome back to your weekly Premier Injuries podcast where we discuss all things to do with injuries in the Premier League. As always, we're giving insights into players' injuries with knowledge on return times and cutting through rumour or misinformation. This is at the same time every Thursday, so hit that subscribe button, hit the bell, make sure you're involved with the community. But as always, let's get into the talking points then because there's been two or one potential, one confirmed ACL injury. Um, this, These are big ones. And I don't know if you want to start off with the Ogbonna situation, Ben, because that one is confirmed. The details are a little bit more clearer. So can you talk us through this injury uh, and the latest with Ogbonna and I guess Chilwell as well? Yeah, Andrew Ogbonna. Um, we know that he's now underwent uh, surgery to, to reconstruct his knee. The expectation or, or typically uh, return to play timeline is in and around nine months. Uh, average return to play for data collected over the Premier League over the last 10 plus years indicates around about a 270 to 280 day return to play period. However, you know, that's, you know, there are always exceptions to the rule. Um, Centre half uh, Florian Lejeune and Newcastle centre back in, in recent time. He was back playing within 120 days um, for Newcastle. However, what I would say is the research would indicate that any return to play within that nine month period uh, increases a significant increase in the possibility of re injury or recurrence, which is what we did see actually with, with Florian Jeune. Um, I think he suffered a recurrence, or oh, sorry, a re injury or a bilateral rupture uh, within about five months of that. Um, so, you know, you've got to be very careful with these injuries. And I think initially, you know, and best to, and, and the club will never, you know, pin their, their, return to play timelines on a specific date but we're looking realistically at, at the beginning of maybe 2022 to 2023 fingers crossed and what is the latest with Chilwell as well I am um, so the official uh, there's been no official update from the club with regards to his uh, current status we know Thomas Tuchel spoke after the win over Juventus. He said he was, you know, extremely concerned, worried. Chilwell had been in a lot of pain, although that did subside post-match. Video footage wasn't great. Mechanism of injury indicated that there may have been some kind of ligament involvement. The way that knee buckled, indicative of, of ACL. Uh, Matt Law from The Telegraph, and he said that, you know, Basically, it's been confirmed scan results imaging today and the extent of which are maybe a little bit inconclusive or they're not, uh, you know, on the, I suppose, on the, the grand scheme of things, maybe better than initially hoped. Um, they're hoping non-surgical um, treatment initially and then, you know, that will be revisited and his knee will be reevaluated at some point further down the line and um, possibly early in the new year. Um, to see then, you know, what kind of progress has been made. And then a decision will be made on, you know, if he's made those positive steps, then great. If not, then possibly he could go under the knife. So Raj, for our listeners, why is this injury so bad? You know, this is probably one of the worst injuries that a footballer can get. Anytime the, the three letters of ACL are talked about, it's usually accompanied by a big lengthy time out. Uh, what kind of mechanism does the ACL play in affecting players so much? I mean, it just, it's maybe the most important ligament in the knee in terms of stability. And so that's why it's so crucial for um, knee stability, right? And so whenever you're changing direction, whenever you're decelerating those two things, Obviously, those happen a lot in football, especially when you're doing it spontaneously. Uh, the ACL comes under stress to help stabilize those motions. And therefore, that's why it's such a long, uh, relatively long return to play process. Although outcomes have certainly improved over the years due to better surgical intervention, due to better rehab. Unfortunately, it's, I mean, the injury is so common that we, with these injuries that have a really, really high, higher prevalence rate, you can just become better at treating them because the more sample size you have, right, the better you get at doing it. And so the higher demand there is. Now, and I would say, you know, in Bono's case, completely agree with Ben. 
risk reward doesn't make sense to bring him back uh, this season. I mean, not, not going to happen in my opinion. So might as well wait, give him the time over the summer to come back, start it next season. And then Chilwell sounds like, I think that, to me, it's actually good news compared to what I thought initially is that it's, you know, it's a, maybe a partial tear. So you treat it conservatively, see how that ligament responds, see if he still has knee stability. And then it, uh, at the new year, you reassess if he's progressing well, right? We know with like part with, with grade two tears, you can come back between four to five months typically. So he could play out, you know, come back this year. If not, you still have time to do that ACR reconstruction and have him ready for next season. So that um, calculus makes sense to me. Ben, with the situation though, Ben Chilwell, 24 years of age, Angelo Ogbonnet is 33. Is, is age a big factor with this injury as well? I mean, for a lot of injuries, yes, it is. But when I, I had a look through the data, as it happened with, with ACL reconstruction, and we had a look at, at positional returns and also age variances, and actually noted that um, those players of uh, who were older did return to play slightly quicker uh, in terms of uh, what we would see ordinarily. But of course, what it, you know, the caveat as, as always is these are not always like for like um, injuries. There are or, you know secondary problems. There are or other structural. Um, damage involved in those injuries so we don't always know the case as well and as we've touched upon many times before as well a return to play doesn't necessarily mean that a player is is fit and ready to cope with the demand again you need to look at the wider circle their importance their status within the club and um, the player you know their contract situation their stakeholders influence um, you know, so there's lots of things to consider in and around that. Like I say, just because somebody is maybe okay to play in the short term, you know, what? How would you really classify somebody as being, you know, fit, fit for now, fit for purpose, fit over six months, or fit in 12, 24, or thirty six months down the line? Um, so there's there's a lot of things to consider about that. I mean, look, we. A good example that I always like to reference would be the return of Roberto Baggio from a, a ruptured ACL. And I think, if I recall, it's in and around 80, 84 days return to play. But he was coming into twilight of his career. He had the World Cup to aim for. Um, he knew once he had that competition out of the way that was it. He was finished. He was done. He was going to retire. So, you know, he didn't really have anything else to say, track him to worry about. There was no long-term, um, you know, ramifications of that decision. And uh, you look, he came back and that was a, a very successful and swift return to play for him. I wanted to ask as well, Ben, with the type of injury that Chilwell has had previously, it was, um, was it a fatigue related injury where it was kind of activated from almost overuse? Could that have affected the ACL injury as well? Or is this maybe nothing at all related to it? Is it, is it not kind of a, a compilation of a lot of problems? I mean, fatigue can be an influencing factor. Um, I mean, are you referring to the plantar fasciitis from his, which uh, was hindering and hampering towards the end of his Leicester career and then sort of carried over. Uh, but it could certainly be an issue. Maybe, you know, we've talked about players who were involved in, in Europe, you know, the European championships and almost Chilwell was part of that squad and he was, he was underutilized or I don't think he even played a minute in that competition. So you almost become deconditioned because you're not training fully. You're not playing any minutes with the team. He missed out that big chunk of, of pre-season training, that cornerstone. And now he's been thrown back in. You know, he, he had to work his way back into that squad. Um, uh, Marcus Alonso had been playing great. And then all of a sudden, you know, he's, he's number one. He's starting in, in the league. He's starting in Europe. He's back in the England squad. So, you know, potentially, you know, there's there, there could be impact from, from fatigue just with regards to his high load in recent games. So kind of throwing it back to you, Raj, with with the treatment of ACL, it's not always the, the same sort of thing. Obviously, it depends on the type of injury. But even if two injuries are similar, it's not always surgery that's done. Sometimes 
uh, it's given the, the healing process. Why would that be chosen one process over another? Why is it not a uniform way of treating it? You know, it depends on severity. So if you have, really, so it depends on how much that ACL is torn. Firstly, like if you have a full rupture, you have to get it reconstructed. That's just what it is for the most part um, for high level athletes. Uh, when it comes to like, those moderate tears, then it really comes down to, it can come down to how unstable the knee is. Even if you have a high grade two, typically there's going to be, that's, that's still related with significant knee instability. So at that point, it just becomes, let's just reconstruct the ligament. Now, if it's a lower grade, even within, even within a grade two, you have a different the spectrum. And so if the player is not showing that level of instability, you can give them some time to see, okay, let's see how they respond to more conservative treatment. And that's what seems to be the case with Chilwell, whether it's grade two or, you know, lesser than that, we don't know, but it definitely sounds like where it's certainly not an overt grade three. And we, oh, go yeah, on. sorry. I mean, what I was going to say, I was actually just recently watching it. Um, and if anybody follows any of the stuff that's produced out in Doha, Doha at the um, Aspital Clinic, uh, Professor yeah. Verdong, he done a, a recent presentation. He's a knee specialist. Uh, and he spoke about uh, ACL uh, injuries and it, repair versus reconstruction. And he spoke about all of the hype around repair being, you know, this. Uh, but ultimately, it's, you know, it's reconstruction, particularly in elite level athletes, because, you know, uh, repairs have a much higher failure rate. So that to me, knowing probably where, where Chelsea are, and in understanding that, that suggests to me that we could be looking at something which is in and around maybe that, that grade one. So they'd be fairly optimistic that this non-surgical treatment uh, will work. But, you know, ultimately, do you delay a month in the hope that, you know, there's a good response there? Um, and in which case, if it isn't, he goes under the knife and he's out for the season. Or do you just send him straight down now and he's out for the season? You know, it's, it's maybe wise. And, and the player will certainly want that. Uh, his focus now will be shifting on Qatar in the World Cup as well. You know, that's that's obviously disappointing for domestically for Chelsea. But he'll be thinking, you know, potentially his World Cup's at risk here. So the fact that it's been moved to a winter World Cup is, is certainly benefited him massively. Raj, one of the brilliant reasons why we chat to you as well is, is you've got a good knowledge of other sports and so is the return to play different in maybe uh, American football or, or baseball or, or these other American sports basketball as well uh, because you know we talked about Baggio there coming back in a very short time frame but do those American sports the mechanisms of the body uh, does that allow a shorter or maybe a longer time to come back? Typically, you see it's trying to, it's trying to similar uh, with American sports. You typically see around a nine to ten month return timeline. I think it's slightly faster when it comes to to football, and even then, I've seen it, it depends on the country as well. I think if I looked at like I think I looked at recently data from like Italy, and they have some like five very very fast return to play. So some of it comes down to protocol within the country as well. That would be Professor Moriani, is it, Raj? Yeah. Prof uh, Professor Moriani, who who inherently is is Rafa's go-to um, surgeon. And he, uh, well, he done Lejeune. He also done Ronaldo uh, Ahrens from Newcastle. And, and he was returned to play within around four to five months as well. Is Zaniolo maybe possibly? Uh, um, so hugely successful. But obviously not without its risks, and I think uh, I, I understand. You know, and we again we talk about player-led decisions and and recommendations from the club. There was there's there's other examples within the club where you know um, uh, players are given the choice of of where they'd like to go. You know, do you take that chance and go to somebody like Professor Moriani, on the understanding that you could return within four to five months, but the potential ramification, both in the short, medium and long term, are as such. 
or do you prefer to go, you know, more of a of a, an orthodox route, say, and, and you, you know, fill that timeline in as you as you would inherently would? I think it's was it Grinheim, the, the the research that said, you know, like I say, any any return to play within nine months, the nine risk months. Is, is significant. Post nine months, that risk is reduced by 51% month on month, post nine. So, you know, waiting that little bit longer. Uh, I think Virgil van Dijk was 10 months, you know, in, you know, decreases your chances of, of recurrence massively. I guess the final question to both of you then on the, the ACL situation, quite often with a lot of injuries, the, the risk factor is that, you know, you don't return early enough, that you lose fitness, that you lose sharpness. Would you say that almost with ACL, the, the difference is, is that time is your greatest friend that maybe taking that extra precautious route, as you've described there, Ben, 10 months with Van Dyke is, is a little bit better. What would you say, Raj, first and foremost? Yeah, I mean, so the fitness deficit aspect is certainly one to consider, but the other part of it that's more important is the actual, the, the pliability, the strength of the actual ligament itself. So I think some studies are showing that after reconstruction, it takes over 18 months for the ligament to actually be reintegrated fully back into the body. And so that doesn't mean you can't play on it. We're talking about full reintegration, right? And so it's all about when you're in those early stages, you have to balance the fitness deficits with the actual healing of the ligament. And so that's so as you get farther into it, then the fitness may, might become more of a priority. And Ben, you know, to carrying on that point do you think that maybe the fact that it takes that while to reintegrate is that maybe why you know we often hear it it's it's maybe a, a bit of a cliche with commentators but there seems to be an element of truth to it as well as they say oh he's a shadow of himself and then all of a sudden maybe a year or two later oh they're back to the player that they used to be is that a big element of the acl injury i mean absolutely not just the acl i think psychologically the impact is is huge um, I reference uh, Aaron Ramsey, his his leg break. I think he mm -hmm. stated that it was over three years before he actually just went out on the pitch and felt comfortable and confident enough that his body was able to cope with the demands and that if he had a challenge on that leg, it would be to stand up to the rigours of the game. Uh, you know, and the ACL is no different to that. Um, you know, it's something that, that needs to be managed, of course. Um, so it, it's difficult um, you know, we're talking about elite level athletes here, players at the top of the game who are who are rightly rewarded for that. But as you go down the pyramid, you know, there are other decisions to make. But, you know, examples, Ricardo Pereira, the current player in the Premier League. How many times have we heard, you know, the fact that he maybe is, is, is nowhere near where we've seen with, with pre-injury levels? Um, and since he's returned from that ACL problem, you know, he's picking up so many you know, minor muscular setbacks and he's just not able to get that uh, routine, that level of consistency, that, that playing time, those starts, you know, to maybe try and attain optimum levels of performances. So, you know, it's, it's like I say, just because a player does actually return to play, there's no guarantees that they're going to return to performance as they were pre-injury. I mean, Raj, biomechanically, is there a, a reason for this that, that does the ACL injury mean that a player has lost some of their power just in terms of strength because of the, the ligament damage? Or is it kind of what Ben is talking about there, more psychological plus fitness reasons? Yeah, no, typically, I mean, in terms of pace or strength, the ligament doesn't really provide, it's more of a stabilizer. It doesn't really get involved that much in those things. Typically, it's going to be what Ben said with the psychological aspects, and then we call kinesiophobia, fear of movement or re-injury. And then also, like we talked about fitness deficits, right? If that muscle's atrophied, or if you haven't been sprinting at full pace it's, or higher intensity, it's going to take you time to get back to that. I mean, we even saw it this year with Virgil van Dijk, right? At the start of the season, the first month or so for him to get, get, kind of get reacclimated to where he used to be. And um, it, yeah, it just takes time. You know, it, it's a gradual process for the body and the mind to get readapted. 
Well, that is the analysis there. We went in deep on the ACL, but we've given quite a bit of time on the ACL injury because, you know, it is one of the biggest ones. Not quite nine months, but it has been a, a few minutes. As always, please do hit that subscribe button like the video comment below as well if you've got any questions do send them in to us we read all your comments and we try to reply to them or at least act upon them as such make sure to watch raj's channel 3cb performance there's some great videos there he has a fantastic one on the Chilwell injury but for now i'm going to wish everybody the best of luck ben looks like he's going to explode about how angry <laughs> Pogba's made him we're going to go off air and and calm him down and hopefully he'll be all right for tomorrow's video. <laughs>